Hey, good morning and hafri everyone. My name is Shirak Bojwani and I'll be your host today. Uh, thank you for joining us for the Committee on Regional Affairs press conference where we'll be announcing our uh, DOI grant to improve access to higher education in the Blue Continent. Uh, joining us today, we have distinguished leaders uh, from all over the Blue Continent as well as around the country. Uh, here on Guam, we have Vice Speaker Tina Rose Munya Barnes, the Chairwoman on the Committee on Regional Affairs, Senator Mary Camacho Torres, the Vice Chairwoman on the Committee on Regional Affairs, Senator Amanda Shelton, the Chairwoman on the Committee on Higher Education. We also have with us uh, Attorney Rodney Jacob, who's our WICHI Commissioner, as well as Dr. Amanda Del Rosario, who's the Executive Director and Mentor for the HOME Program. Our brothers and sisters in the CNMI, uh, we have with us Senate President Jude Hofschneider, uh, as well as Mr. Kevin Bautista, the Press Secretary for Governor Rolf Torres. We have with us also from the CNMI, uh, the Northern Marianas College, President Frankie Elliptico, who is their WICHI Commissioner. Over in the Federated States of Micronesia, we're pleased to be joined today by the Honorable David Penuelo, President of the Federated States of Micronesia. Our friends in Palau, we're pleased to be joined uh, today by the Honorable Surangel Whips Jr., President of the Republic of Palau. Unfortunately, President Kabua is unable to join us today, but we do have a statement of his that will be read. And our friends from Wichi, I'm pleased to announce that we're joined by their president, Demery Michelow, Vice President Patrick Lane, Vice President Dennis Mohat, as well as Margot Kola Lancia, who's the Director of Student Access Programs, Programs and Services. We also have Ms. Laura Ewing and Ms. Melanie Sidwell. And without further ado, I'd like to open the uh, floor up for some remarks by uh, the Honorable Tina Rose Munya Barnes. Sharak Hafade and Manana Sizuz. Many of God's blessings to all of you here. Uh, before I start, I'd li also like to acknowledge the presence in this conference room is joining us is Speaker uh, Therese Terlahi from the island of Guam. Sizuz Masi for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, to the listening audience, which he is the Western Interstate Commission on Higher Education. Myself and um, Secretary Senator Amanda Shelton are a member of the Wichi's Legislative Advisory Committee. With Guam's current Wichi membership, we have paid $78,000 a year, and these are the benefits. 87 residents saved $1.2 million in 2019-2020 through the Western Undergraduate Exchange, the WUE, and the Western Region, uh, Regional Graduate Program, the WRGP. These WICHE programs provide significant student savings on non-resident tuition at 170 plus Western US public colleges and universities. In 2019 and 2020, this program has provided Guam a 1,518% return of our yearly investment of $78,000. Guam students and their families have saved 3.4 million since our participation in 2016. You, the University of Guam has joined WICHI and the University of Guam degrees combined with WICHI's graduate programs off island offers a powerful combination for our students and our community. Throughout COVID, I appreciate the partnership between WICHI and the Guam Behavioral, Behavioral and Wellness Center, where WICHI has allowed us to join the Psychology Consortium and assist the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center to address critical shortages. I am a member of the WICHI Legislative Advisory Committee and having seen the successes for Guam and the CNMI, I had looked at how we can extend this benefit to the entire blue continent. I had written to the governors of Guam and CNMI, as well as the uh, President Manuelo and President Whips Jr. and the President Kabua, and I sought their support for an um, 
OIA grant, uh, Office of Insular Affairs, that my office had worked on with Wichi. And last week, I heard back from Wichi President Demi Mechilau informing me the good news. With the savings from the OI, OIA absorbing our WICHE membership fees, I had introduced Bill number 158-36 yesterday, along with my colleagues here and nine of us in total. It is called the Barada Act, which means come back or round trip. We use the savings from the OIA grant to fund the required scholarship office for the WICHE's PSEP program. The PSEP, which is the Professional Student Exchange Program, will allow local students to get sponsorship from the government and private businesses here on Guam while they attain their education in 10 health fields, ranging from a medical degree to optometry to dentistry to veterinary medicine and so much more. Once they complete this, they are required to come back home and practice here on Guam. This allows our children to access 130 participating programs in 10 professional healthcare fields at 60 universities. Through the PSEP, a student can save anywhere from 32,000 to 130,000 on tuition over the duration of a health degree study. By participating in PSEP, we benefit by inspiring and compelling graduates to return home to practice and bolster the professional healthcare workforce of their communities. I am glad to have here with us, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, Dr. Amanda Del Rosario here. I had met, our team had met with uh, uh, Dr. Amanda last year after hearing about her journey to med school and now the great work she is doing. She is the executive director of HOME, which is a nonprofit uh, that mentors local students in their journey to med school. I was browsing through the HOME program website and I was so impressed that I counted, I counted 98 aspiring medical students over the last four years who are from Guam who want to become doctors. And I must say that if we are producing 98 medical students and you're having a hard time recruiting just five of them, I must say we have a problem. I lastly want to share that I would like to uh, thank the following individuals for making this happen. Um, former Senator Dennis Rodriguez, who, was first, who first got Guam uh, enrolled in Wichi. I also must thank uh, Senate President uh, from CNMI, uh, Senator, uh, uh, Senate President uh, Jude Hofschneider, who uh, advocated and encouraged uh, Senator Amanda and myself to be committee members, and um, Wichi Commissioner uh, Attorney Rodney Jacobs from Guam, uh, President uh, Demi uh, Michelau from Wichi and her whole entire staff, I'd also like to extend my thank yous to our staff and uh, those who help uh, make this program moving forward for the Blue Continent uh, going to be a continued success. I have my communications director, uh, Mr. Sharak Bawani, uh, Kevin Baltista from Governor uh, Torres's uh, office, uh, Pilar uh, Shimizu, uh, who is with uh, Senator uh, Shelton, um, Ms. Sarah Elmore Hernandez, who's with Senator Torres. Uh, Dong Cho, the Department of Interior's field officer for Guam. Uh, FSM Council General, Teresa Philippin. And FSM uh, PIO, Richard Clark. Uh, from the RMI, RMI President's Chief of Staff, Mr. Christopher DeBroom. And Palau's Council General, uh, Vic April, who just recently <laughs> retired and uh, President Staff Melinda uh, Lawrence. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, and to the listening audience here, uh, I just want to say that is uh, with heartfelt appreciation uh, uh, for um, 
all the work that is uh, that, that has started, that ha is being done, that has been successful, but more importantly for this journey moving forward, then I extend my own dunklu and dunklu na si Zeus maasi for for this program to be a success for our children, who will become leaders uh, real soon. Sign maasi. Thank you so much, Madam Vice Speaker. At this point, uh, I'd like to open the floor for some remarks by uh, the Honorable David Panuelo, President of the Federated States of Micronesia. Mr. President, you have the floor. for our respective territories and nations, and that is the most important asset for our uh, countries, our territories, and that is our human resources. And so uh, uh, by getting the good news that uh, Vice Speaker has just uh, shared with us or a few days ago, uh, uh, it's indeed uh, an honor to be part of this family uh, to enjoy the uh, fruits of uh, our labor and the uh, uh, generosity of of the uh, Department of Interior. And so on behalf of our country and our citizens, uh, I'm not sure if there's any TOI representatives in the uh, uh, forum here, but I extend to Secretary of uh, uh, Interior, uh, TOI, uh, Secretary Holland, uh, for the decision, for the very important decision to cover the uh, membership of our free associated states and the uh, territories here. I myself is a product of uh, uh, the U.S. colleges and universities, uh, uh, President Michelau. I went to Eastern Oregon University, and I know what education really means for our country. By assisting the development of our human resources, you know that uh, uh, doing that is exactly helping the nation-building nation process of our respective countries and territories throughout our Blue Pacific region. Uh, so I, I congratulate all of you. I don't need to belabor uh, the... Uh, uh, the details of this program, but I want to thank the uh, the which uh, entire membership. Uh, I see uh, the listing here. So through uh, the which uh, president, uh, uh, Michelle Lau, through you, I thank all the membership uh, of which uh, the states and territories that are listed here and your entire history of uh, uh, bringing what is good in the development of our human resources. Vice Speaker has such importance of uh, building uh, uh, you know, our young people to be leaders of uh, tomorrow, representing our uh, nations and territories. That's very important. So the emphasis should rightly be on, on the young folks, uh, citizens of our countries to build our, <clears throat> our human resources. And so my thanks to TOI, Wichi, uh, leadership of uh, Guam, 
uh, and the CNMI for initiating this and the entire team that has made this possible throughout our uh, wider uh, Pacific region. And uh, lastly, I did not uh, do recognitions, but normally in the uh, exchanges, I want to extend my very best uh, recognition, even though it's uh, late in my uh, intervention, uh, to uh, His Excellency uh, President uh, uh, Wips Jr. And all of you are leaders in your respective capacities uh, out there. So I think this is what I'd like to uh, make. We intend to issue a, a press release to announce this to the leadership of the FSM, our Congress of Micronesia is very, uh, very uh, uh, happy to hear this news because you know, uh, with the meager resources that we have, uh, uh, President Michelau, uh, about three to four million that we provide our uh, annually, our young people who get out there to engage uh, in the higher education pursuit. Uh, this really means with the substantial discount of in-state tuition, this really means stretching. If we're covering 500 students a year in the very productive studies, that means it probably can uh, push it out for another uh, several hundred uh, with the substantial in-state uh, tuition that we have. And so we are currently negotiating with the U.S. the expiring provisions of our, of our compact as uh, Marshall Islands and now are also doing. You know, the sector of education is one of the areas we're going to be asking for, uh, you know, resources to also help in the nation building process that we are. So I don't want to take too much of the time, but to express uh, my deep appreciation to all of you who have made this possible. And again, we extend to you a warm casalelia from our uh, islands. Uh, we are COVID-19 free still. And uh, fortunately, we, we have a substantial support from U.S. in terms of vac vaccines. So we're trying to move from COVID-19 free to COVID-19 safe by achieving some form of uh, herd immunity in our vaccination or inoculation process. Congratulations to all of you. I may not uh, touch some of your names, but equally my recognition and courtesies is extended to you. Kalangan, and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to say a few words here. Thank you so much, uh, President Panuelo. Uh, thank you for those inspiring remarks and for your leadership as well. At this point, I'd like to uh, welcome the Honorable Surangel Whips Jr., President of the Republic of Palau, to deliver a few remarks. Mr. President, the floor is yours. Mr. President, I believe you are muted. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Ali and Will Tutau from Palau. Uh, we are definitely uh, delighted to uh, be able to join this uh, meeting this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, Vice Speaker Barnes, uh, President Panuelo, and of course, esteemed members, uh, President of Wiche, as team members of this group this morning, I, we are just so excited uh, about the announcement. Um, uh, when I ran last year, one of the, um, uh, our slogans was uh, putting people first. And I, I believe people are the foundation. They are the, the most valuable resource that any nation has. And, and, and we must develop them to the fullest capacity. And uh, we are just so excited by this opportunity uh, that has allowed uh, Palau to be able to join uh, Weche. Um, the, uh, the cost of education, as you know, just continues to rise and puts it out of reach for many of our, our young people. And uh, I, I just remember when I went to school and uh, in-state tuition uh, at UCLA was only uh, 5,000 for a whole year of school. And, and now it's uh, for Palau to go there. It's more than forty thousand just for tuition. So, I, you know, I just realized that it just made it has made it impossible for many of our young people to gain uh, this valuable experience. And uh, being part of which it now opens that door again. And uh, we are um, uh, just so excited and so grateful uh, to you. Uh, Vice Speaker Barnes for taking the lead and, and really I say pulling us on board and, 
and, and allowing us to be part of this uh, uh, program. Uh, it'll uh, help many of our young people who many times uh, drop out of school and don't complete because of financial constraints. Uh, I mean, that's the reality that we face. And, and opening up those doors and knocking down those barriers, that's what this program is all about. And it's, uh, there's nothing more important than, than education. It really is what uh, transforms people's lives. Uh, my father is a product of uh, the GI Bill. Without the GI Bill, he wouldn't have been able to go to college. And uh, it's these types of programs that really produce our future leaders, our medical professionals that we so much need. And, um, you know, I, I just uh, want to thank everyone uh, for all the tremendous work that you've done to get this program uh, going and allowing Palau to be part of it, uh, especially uh, we, uh, our appreciation to the Secretary of the Interior, uh, Secretary Allen, for uh, their support, uh, the OI support. Uh, we uh, are, you know, one uh, blue continent and, you know, uh, Speaker Bar uh, Vice Speaker Barnes is just uh, and Pacific uh, brothers and sisters, and, and we need to help each other. So staying in. That's why part of the protection, I think, is a, a strong economy and the foundation of a strong This long ways in, in providing uh, uh, economic President of Wiche, and thank you, uh, President Ponuelo, and our friends in uh, CNMI and the Marshall Islands uh, for all your support so that today we can really celebrate uh, 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 this new milestone. And we will be putting a press release out here, um, uh, letting our, our, our people know about these opportunities. And, and uh, we look forward to many more of our young people getting educated and coming back and contributing to our islands and the Pacific. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for those uh, remarks, Mr. President. Uh, at this point, the Honorable President David Kabua is unable to join us, but he has submitted some uh, remarks that he would like to be read. And at this point, I'd like to call on the Honorable Mary Camacho Torres, the Vice Chairwoman of the Committee on Regional Affairs, if she could kindly read those remarks. Thank you, Sharath. We received a letter from President David Kabua to the Honorable Tina Rose Munya Barnes, dated June 29, 2021. This is regarding a letter of appreciation and support, and it reads, a warm and sincere greetings of Yokwe to you, Madam Speaker Barnes, and to the people and government of Guam. I am indeed very delighted to have received your letter of June 23, 2021, announcing the approval from the United States Department of Interior's Office of Insular Affairs, the wonderful initiative and grant application for our Blue Continent's membership to the Western Interstate Commission on Higher Education, WICHI. On behalf of the people and government of the Republic of the Marshall Islands, Please accept our sincere gratitude and appreciation for this marvelous opportunity extended with open hearts to our citizens as a symbol of our strong regional cooperation amongst members of our blue continent. On that note, may I also offer the Republic of the Marshall Islands full support and stand with you on the way forward toward the successful collaboration with WICHI to which we are proud of becoming one of its newest members. 
I have but high hopes and anticipations for the betterment and success of our peoples through Wichi, on which we shall have forged a greater working relationship as brothers and sisters of our blue continent. Please accept, Madam Barnes, the assurances of my highest consideration and best wishes. Sincerely, David Kabua, President. Thank you so much, Senator Torres, and thank you, uh, President Kabua. At this point, uh, I'd like to call on Senate President uh, Jude Hofschneider from the CNMI Senate uh, to deliver a few uh, kind remarks. Uh, Mr. Senate President, I believe you're muted. I apologize and greetings and hafre uh, and tiro everyone that are uh, in this meeting. I wish to uh, bring uh, a half a day spirit from our beautiful islands of the CNMI. And I'm also privileged to be seated alongside uh, uh, our blue content leaders and, and colleagues and professionals uh, in this very uh, important uh, day. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Vice Speaker uh, um, Tina Munya Barnes for initiating this uh, uh, meeting this morning, and uh, also for her uh, her initiative uh, back in February to uh, explore the idea of uh, asking assistance in the time when we are in dire need of our financial constraints here because of the last of. Uh, 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 Mother Nature creating a wrath here of the last two to three years uh, in the CNMI and uh, in the region. Uh, I do want to extend appreciation to all the uh, uh, the Wichi partners that have guided us along the way through us uh, through and through since our membership back in 2012 when it was first uh, initiative uh, initiated here in the CNMI and. Uh, um, at the time, I briefly served as the uh, lieutenant governor when uh, the late governor Eloy Enos had asked me to uh, represent the state. Uh, and uh, I've seen it evolved and it, and it grew over time. And through that initiative, uh, it represents a lot of uh, savings, of uh, financial savings for parents and students uh, alike. And it, it keeps growing uh, despite the uh, little setbacks with all these pandemic and uh, natural disasters. And, and, and uh, we look forward to uh, uh, partnering with the rest of our Blue Continent sister, brothers and sisters as we forge ahead. And I also would like to uh, uh, mention this, that as a result of our uh, partnership, uh, membership in WeChi, we were able to muster enough, uh, a couple of important legislations that I, I uh, gladly uh, authored, and that is the creation of uh, uh, the PSEP, uh, most no, uh, also known as the Professional Student Exchange Program, PSEP, and that uh, we've had some of our students uh, in the medical fields that have currently enrolled in the various uh, WeChi partner schools. And we're very excited for for our, our people to return back and service our region here. And uh, I, I wish to uh, uh, congratulate our, uh, our uh, um, new partners of, of Wichi in the region to uh, for finally uh, uh, take partaking in this very important uh, organization, uh, the west side of, 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 of uh, the United States and Hawaii. So again, I thank you for your time and I, uh, I look forward to meeting with you guys personally, hopefully uh, sometime soon. Memoria has done half a day. Thank you so much, Mr. Senate President. Um, I would also like to turn the floor over to Mr. Kevin Bautista, the press secretary for Governor Ralph Torres to deliver a few remarks. Uh, Kevin, the floor is yours. Thanks, Shirek. Buenos Aires, Wami, and good morning, everyone. On behalf of Governor Ralph Torres and the CNMI, I thank you for inviting us to participate in this momentous occasion. We wish we could be on Guam in person to further collaborate and engage with all of you. <clears throat> Dispensa and sincere apologies for Governor Torres not being here. He was busy signing a, a historic travel bubble agreement from the, between the CNMI and the Republic of Korea in Seoul just last night. And the CNMI is the first place in the world to have a travel agreement in place with South Korea. 
But thank you, um, Vice Speaker Tina Munya Barnes, for your leadership and coordination and for being a trailblazer for this important initiative. I also want to thank members of the Guam Legislature led by Speaker Therese Talahi, of course, our partners in the region and our leaders, President Panuelo, President Whips Jr., my good friend and my Senate President, Jude Buntalan Hofschneider, for his leadership and proactive policies from the very beginning as Lieutenant Governor and as a Wichita Commissioner. I also want to extend our appreciation for the Wichita leadership and staff. And of course, my brother and colleague, Sharak Wajwani, for the constant emails, text messages, and coordination for the greater good of the Pacific Territories. As the first U.S. Pacific Territory to join Wichita in 2012, we can attest to the benefits of our membership. Here in the CNMI, Wichita has allowed local families to save $3.5 million in total in tuition, a savings benefit that we feel should be extended to the entire Pacific Blue continent. Students from the freely associated states have come to various U.S. jurisdictions and have made it their home. Unfortunately, due to different federal and local guidelines, many times they are disqualified from certain college loans and grants due to the status of their citizenship. By funding the membership of these citizens to Wichita, this would allow them access to affordable education in 170 plus universities in the Western United States. For Governor Torres, who is a graduate of Boise State University, a Wichita Wich member, if I'm not mistaken, and for me as an Islander born and raised in the Pacific, who's had the privilege to get education off island in the U.S. mainland at the University of Michigan and continue to pursue a master's degree on the West Coast at USC online, we know what this means personally. We echo Vice Speaker Tina Munya Barnes' remarks to build our local capacity and to keep our talents here at home. Keeping the brain gain in the Pacific instead of the usual brain drain we see far too often. We now have the resources to develop our own doctors, engineers, and professionals to raise the standard of living for everyone who calls our beautiful blue continent home. Governor Torres, Lieutenant Governor Palacios, and Senate President and the CDMI leadership pledged their full support for this initiative. This marks a historic step in higher educational attainment for the Pacific, and congratulations to everyone involved, both here on the call and out there in our islands. Thank you, and Uncle Luna Sadus Masi, Zangilaso, for the opportunity. And the floor is back to you, Shrek. Thank you so much, uh, Kevin. Uh, this idea actually started out with uh, Kevin and I just brainstorming out loud with the boss's tall order, and somehow we got it done. So thank you for always being a good sounding board. At this point, uh, I'd like to turn the floor over to our chairwoman on the Committee on Higher Education here at the Guam Legislature, the Honorable Senator Amanda Shelton. Thank you very much, Sharag. Uh, buenas and half a day, everyone, uh, to uh, our partners who are joining us online and uh, all of our uh, our colleagues online. Half a day, and thank you so much for this partnership. This is a really exciting day for higher education on Guam and throughout the region. Uh, this is uh, an opportunity, I think, uh, like no other for us. And I want to thank, of course, the vice speaker for leading this initiative and Senator Mary Torres for uh, her support of our students here on island. And I know that uh, this DOI grant is now going to uh, open up funding for us to now establish an office to be able to participate in the PSCP program, which is really a proven and time-tested initiative uh, from Wichi. Uh, to allow us a real path into the healthcare field for our local students. And, uh, you know, it might not seem like the ideal situation to encourage our students on Guam to leave off island and to take up opportunity away from home. But as policymakers, we've had to come to terms with this and recognize that we don't have the capacity to meet every need of our local workforce. And this pandemic has surely showed us uh, that uh, we need more people in healthcare and in professional fields uh, to help us uh, get through tough times, but to help us uh, develop as an island community. And so uh, this is a, an opportunity that together uh, as lawmakers, uh, we are very, very honored and proud to be creating today. 
uh, and we hope that this is an initiative that uh, all our other colleagues will also support uh, to help really uh, boost our workforce and, and bring these needed professionals um, back to Guam, uh, back home, and incentivize them to come home and serve uh, our people because that's ultimately what we want. We want them to, to come home and to be part of the community that raised them and be uh, be uh, leaders here on our island. So again, Sidhuas Masi to uh, our, our partners at the Department of Interior uh, at Wichi, thank you very much for your help and your assistance uh, along the way. And to all of our uh, partners throughout the region, we can't wait to see you in person and to uh, continue to collaborate uh, together. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sharag. Thank you so much, Senator Shelton. And uh, next, I'd like to call up our Vice Chairwoman on the Committee on Regional Affairs, our favorite team player, the ever so gracious Senator uh, Mary Camacho Torres. Thank you, Shirag. I consider and contemplate how, as we're celebrating our liberation uh, so many years later, 77 years later, this focus on education was where our island was at, at a point where we were contemplating how to build ourselves up, how to become sustainable, how to become a skilled island with people that can adequately care for each other and lead each other. And it was through education. I bring this up because that opportunity, the similar opportunity that we're contemplating for our blue continent now, was the opportunity that was proposed to many of our citizens after World War II including my father and many of his first cousins who were that first wave of Chamorros that left island, who were encouraged to become professionals, to seek experience, to build upon the most precious resource that our island could possibly own and possess, and that was human capital. And I'm very uh, honored Vice Speaker, that, that you have um, brought me along this journey because, and I'm very honored and privileged to have learned so much from all the regional leaders and from the, the leaders of Wichi as well, and from our, our uh, committee person, Mr. Rodney Jacobs, who has really opened up our eyes. And uh, Dr. Amanda, you are truly an inspiration as well and, and a, a role model for what we can show our children but I just want to congratulate everybody. Uh, this is the first step of a journey, but a journey of a family as a blue continent. So let's just keep that kinship alive and uh, the spirit of an Efemalik. Let it truly resonate throughout all of our islands and our island nations. And um, I just continue to lend my support and uh, gratitude that we have collaboratively arrived at a starting place for all of us. Sidhus Maasi. Thank you so much, Senator Torres. And uh, now I'd like to call on the president of the Western Interstate Commission on Higher Education, Ms. Demery Michelot. Thank you, Shrag, and good morning. Thank you to my esteemed colleagues across the Blue Continent for your partnership and collaboration and for allowing me the honor of joining you here today. The Western Interstate Commission for Higher Education, or WICHE, as we're known, is an interstate compact of the Western states and U.S. Pacific territories and freely associated states that work collaboratively to expand educational access and excellence for all residents of the West. To assist with the membership costs, as you've heard today, a group of talented and collaborative leaders from Guam, the CNMI, and across the Pacific worked very hard for many months to secure funding through a technical assistance program grant from the U.S. Department of Interior's Office of Insular Affairs. This funding will cover the, the cost of fiscal year 2022's which membership dues for all six of the U.S. Pacific territories and freely associated states should all decide to join. Each of our 16 members benefits from the full range of which programs, including student access programs through which students throughout the region can save substantially on college tuition and a range of other which programs and efforts, including policy analysis and research, institutional collaboration initiatives, workforce development, behavioral health, workforce training and assistance and technology policy and practice. Our Pacific Island members each bring unique perspective and knowledge that will only strengthen the impact and value of post-secondary education across the West. And this grant is a testament to the visionary leadership and collaboration across the Blue Continent. 
Together, we can be trusted partners working to strengthen student access and success, as well as workforce in the region. And it's truly an honor to join you today as we make this important announcement together that will positively impact the region for years to come. And I thank you for your time and for being a part of this historical moment. Thank you so much, uh, Madam President. I understand there are a few members of the uh, uh, WICHE organization that are on the call. If uh, anybody would like to chime in and deliver a few remarks as well, uh, the floor is all yours. Mr. Vice President Dennis Mohat, I believe your uh, mic is muted. Yeah, you know, you'd think after a year I'd have that down. But um, I, uh, I just want to say it's a great milestone, and I appreciate all the hard work uh, everyone has done. You know, the fruits of this labor um, are, are the young and the, the folks who are, are going to enjoy um, the opportunities that education brings. I just say that it doesn't all have to be off island. Um, I, I just wanted to mention one program, uh, actually two programs. One is a partnership that we initiated between the Northern Marianas College and the University of Alaska Fairbanks uh, for a two plus two degree in, in higher in uh, social work, uh, where students complete their first two years at the university at the Northern Marianas College and the second two to the baccalaureate at uh, through a distance education program from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Why Alaska? Because we wanted a, a program that focused on uh, serving people in remote places and, and, and indigenous populations. And that's what that program was about. And so this year, uh, four students are enrolled in that program. And next May, we're gonna be graduating the, some of the first students and so that's a that's a really a, an important thing is that um, all all of our programs don't have to mean people leaving. Sometimes we can reach programs into where people are committed to living, and um, that's another tool in our toolbox. And then, as already was uh, uh, mentioned, uh, we're building a psychology internship uh, program uh, on Guam right now. And we'll accept the first class of interns next uh, next summer, and that program will be a bridge for people from Guam who have trained off island to come home, and it will also be a bridge for others who are interested in serving the Blue Continent uh, to come and be trained and stay. We hope um, so. That's two examples of programs where folks aren't leaving; folks are coming. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice President. Um, I would also like to open the floor up to Attorney Rodney Jacob, our WICHE Commissioner from, from Guam. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you, uh, uh, and I'll share a perspective uh, that I think everybody uh, knows, but I'll go ahead and say it. So many families and students are grateful to you, our leaders, for um, bringing this program to Guam uh, and to the WICHE uh, staff and leadership. We have saved since joining in 2016 millions of dollars. And that is real to our kids and our families who are struggling every day, um, not only to get by, but to give our kids what um, is one of the best gifts you can give them, which is education. So I just wanted to, to um, add that voice to say thank you from our families and our kids. Uh, it is a very real benefit, um, uh, about $10,000 uh, a year uh, um, per family. Thank you to um, our leadership. Thank you to President uh, Panuelo. Thank you to President Whips Jr. Thank you to Senate President uh, Jude, who's a commissioner. And the CNMI really led this effort and uh, was so generous to Guam uh, when we were uh, when we <clears throat> sorry when we were onboarding. Um, and uh, I just uh, and and of course, Vice Speaker uh, Tina and Senator um, Shelton and Senator Mary Torres. 
your incredible support and leadership with our governor uh, is, I, I just can't say enough, but that benefit is here. And my last comment, um, just being the, uh, one of the, the folks that helped um, uh, bring this uh, uh, program here to our families is the DOI grant is so important because it services part of the wonderful community um, from uh, uh, the greater blue continent, from the RMI, from uh, the FSM, and from uh, the Republic of Palau for your um, citizens that are late, uh, living here. Now everybody in our in our schools on Guam and, and in the region can benefit. Um, and I also want to say thank you to all my fellow board, former uh, board members at Xavier High School. Um, I was the chair for many years and our board's uh, initiative for many years. And I think uh, the leadership on this call knows uh, it was one of our priorities to educate um, uh, our islands and our island leadership. And boy, has it been successful. So thank you. Um, and thanks for the opportunity for uh, letting me say a few words. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Jacob. And now uh, we saved the best for last. Uh, to put everything in perspective, I'd like to call uh, call on Dr. Amanda Del Rosario, uh, daughter of Guam and executive director and mentor for the HOME program. Hi, good morning and half a day. Um, thank you all for having me today. It's an, a true honor um, to be here in your presence. Um, and I'm very privileged to be able to share with you um, just a little bit about my personal story and also my uh, motivation and inspiration behind uh, the HOME program. So as uh, Vice Speaker Barnes had mentioned, uh, HOME stands for Health Opportunities and uh, Medical Exposure. And it is a small nonprofit organization that has been a true passion of mine um, ever since I came back home to Guam in 2015 to start practicing medicine. I grew up on this island and Guam is very much home and where my roots are and it is actually the very reason um, I was inspired to pursue a career in medicine. Um, my ultimate career aspiration was uh, to develop um, my medical training and knowledge and be able to bring that back to Guam and essentially help fill the need for more doctors uh, here. And so um, addressing the shortage of healthcare professionals, um, especially in Guam and the rest of the blue continent really, um, has been a true um, passion and goal of mine in addition to practicing pediatrics. So the HOME program, just to give you a little bit of background, we provide um, support to young, aspiring pre-medical students um, from Guam. And as we all know, we have very limited resources here. And uh, there is no medical school that serves um, Guam and the surrounding Pacific region. And so any, any aspiring pre-medical student from the islands really must apply um, off island uh, as an out of state resident. And that provides, uh, that's a true barrier and a, a great disadvantage compared to other stateside pre-medical students who have the um, benefit of being able to apply to their home state institution. Um, medical school is not only very competitive to get into, it is also extremely expensive. And uh, as was alluded to earlier, the costs of uh, out-of-state tuition is quite exorbitant. And uh, currently the average medical student who finishes their training comes out uh, about $200,000 in debt. And uh, that number is continuing to rise as we know that the cost of education is continuing to increase. Um, so, I am extremely uh, eager and excited to uh, have a chance to collaborate with you all um, with the WICHI program and the PSCP because it really provides um, a wonderful way uh, to financially support these young students uh, who have the passion and the motivation to pursue a career in healthcare um, by incentivizing them 
to come home to their uh, their their home state, Guam, and the other, and of course our our surrounding islands as well, um, to really be able to give back to the community and to do so with that financial support as well. Um, growing up here, uh, there there were no um, real opportunities to really find out uh, the pathway to becoming a doctor. Um, I didn't really have any personal connections in the medical field. And it is extremely difficult and daunting and quite an overwhelming process to um, you know, have this desire to become a healthcare professional, yet not really have the resources to go about that. And so what my home program aims to do is really provide mentorship and guidance to these young students and essentially help train um, our next generation of future healthcare professionals. Um, and so I feel that this would be a beautiful partnership for home to provide the mentorship and the support and um, also uh, tell the students about this opportunity uh, to apply to the WICHE and PSF PSEP programs um, to really incentivize them and say, hey, we know you want to be a doctor. This is what it takes to get in. These are the things that make you a competitive medical school applicant. Um, apply to these witchy programs, um, get your financial support, and come home to practice and serve your community. And when we know that there is such a critical shortage of healthcare professionals here, um, and also how difficult it is to recruit and retain healthcare professionals who may not have um, ties to the islands, um, I just can't think of a better way to really build and strengthen our medical community by cultivating our very own homegrown physicians and medical professionals. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Del Rosario, and that's such an awesome job that you're doing. Um, we, I did get a question from uh, Bea from the Saipan tr uh, Tribune, and she says, question for Dr. Amanda Del Rosario, is home open to accepting scholars from the CNMI, Palau, and FSM? Um, absolutely yes, is the short answer. So um, we are quite a young nonprofit organization that was just established in 2015. Um, and uh, we, we have to date um, over a hundred alumni now. And although uh, we are, the, tar the program is targeted towards Guamanian pre-medical students, there is no reason why um, we can't accept applications from the surrounding islands as well. Um, the limitation of our program is the number of physician mentors that we have in our community. Since each home student is paired individually with a physician mentor whom they shadow during the summer and learn from um, and get in-depth exposure into the medical field. Um, we, uh, as part of our eligibility criteria for the home program, we ask that those who are participating have some sort of ties to the island. Um, there's no reason why we can't include our surrounding uh, Pacific Islands, um, especially because the mission is the same, the shortage is the same. Um, and as the program continues to expand and grow, um, that definitely is um, our goal is, you know, to really be able to expand our services beyond Guam and uh, the surrounding Pacific. So we do have um, a couple of home alumni who actually um, are from Saipan. Um, the requirement is that they just need to be on Guam for the summer in order to participate um, and get that in-depth exposure. But um, certainly uh, that is something that we are very um, uh, interested and open to. So thank you for asking that. Thank you so much, Dr. Del Rosario. Um, I understand the Guam legislature does need to go back into session soon, but uh, we do have a couple minutes to open it up for uh, maybe just one question from each uh, media outlet. I'll start with um, those of us here today. Um, my media mentor, Ms. Uh, Jolene Tobis, uh, if you have any questions.
whatnot. Um, when they come back, if they are working in a government job, then their debts are canceled. There's no, um, like, uh, there's no, they don't have to pay back. So, so with this, with, with the, those who are going, uh, entering and venturing off Island under this, uh, as part of the witchy, uh, will it apply the same if they come back and they work here on Island? Um, it's like services for, for, there would be a service. Uh, thank you very much, Jillian, for that question. The return of investment coming home would put, they would have to put in, uh, five years if I'm not mistaken. But again, that is the part of the introduction of the bill. Uh, of course, uh, when we have the public hearing and we deliberate on the floor, uh, things may change, uh, but, uh, the initial, uh, start would be, uh, the five years, uh, uh, service back. Thank you so much. And now I have uh, Joe Titano the second with the uh, Pacific Daily News. Uh, just a basic process question, uh, Madam Vice Speaker. Uh, how soon are, I know, I know it's, the bill still has to go through, but I mean, how soon are we looking to have students be able to avail of the program and to go through it? How soon as it relates to the program, as we introduce the bill, uh, as soon as we get have the public hearing process, get the bill deliberated on the floor, uh, hopefully it'll get a unanimous support. It gets signed, goes up to the governor and gets signed. Of course, enactment will be done immediately so we can start the process moving forward. And I also have to extend for both uh, UOG and the Guam Community College because they are part of this equation and the um, office would be uh, administered by the Guam Community College. If and I'm Madam speaker, speaker, if I if I may just add to that, um, that's with respect to the the healthcare degrees, the PSEP program. But yes, you're just right. Just so that, right? Just so our community is is clear, is that for undergraduate and um, non health degree graduate degrees, they are available now, and they have been available this benefit since 2016. So, we encourage um, everybody. Uh, uh, who are who is looking um, to go into higher education consider this benefit um, and now the great news is is that uh, greater Micronesia the blue continent is now all qualified for thank those you. two programs that's right thank you for the clarification on that thank you so much uh, Commissioner Jacob um, I also have Mr. Nestor Lacanto with uh, KUAM Nestor Yes, uh, thank you, Shirag, and hope to everyone. Um, a question, I'm, I think, for the panel, or for maybe for Dr. Del Rosario. Um, as, as you know, uh, another bill that's um, currently being debated uh, has brought to light once again the lack of uh, medical specialists and subspecialists on Guam. I'm wondering, um, should uh, the the WICHI program um, incentivize um, would-be uh, medical professionals towards specific uh, uh, specialties that uh, we're lacking here in Guam? The, the, uh, Nestor, the bill does have a critical need component that is initiated in there, so yes. Maybe if, okay, I, thank you. if I can also add on to that, the um, the way we, we wrote the bill was there would be a committee that would be set up, but uh, it would be a culmination of uh, GCC's leadership, the director of public health, GMH, behavioral health, as well as a member of the Guam Medical Association and there to pick a critical need area. And then based on that, that's how they're gonna prioritize the uh, subsidies. Um, next up, I also have with us uh, PNC, if anybody from PNC has a question. Mr. Rock. Yes, sir. I, I apologize to interrupt, but I, I, I want to add a couple of uh, pointers with regards to those two previous questions. Uh, with regards to the PSEP, uh, we do require for every year that you get a support fee from the CNMI, you, you are to perform two years of service here in the, uh, when you return. Um, I do also want to share with the rest of the panel that uh, I, I sponsored a bill with the uh, uh, that is now before the committee uh, that is to uh, uh, create a, a behavioral health uh, scholarship program. Uh, 
and uh, we've got some guidance from our good partners of Wichi as far as the uh, the context of this because in the beginning I initially wanted to avail this to to undergrad students but because of the, the uh, after reviewing uh, uh, its intent it was also recommended to allow for the, the master's program so uh, I should be reporting it out uh, uh, soon uh, perhaps on another platform uh, we're hoping to uh, to uh, uh, address this uh, legislation uh, in the next, uh, uh, maybe as the next next session or or, or two, and I, uh, I'm very excited to uh, to uh, uh, the the initiation of this simply because uh, over the last uh, several years uh, there has been a more um, uh, recognition and and more focus on behavioral health to our citizens and. Uh, over the course of, of times uh, through meetings with professionals, uh, both uh, through a witchy initiation, um, uh, we feel that uh, maybe the the government or the agencies are, uh, we need to take it a step further whereby we need to intervene uh, early on uh, rather than uh, addressing it uh, later on when it's crisis management. but. Aside and separate to that discussion, I, I just wanted to share with the panel that that's what's coming down the pipes here in the CNMI. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Senate President. And, um, you know, Senate President Hofschneider and I joke around with each other all the time that he does such a great job that we have a hard time keeping up. So I keep telling him to slow down. But uh, I guess this is a good cause. So um, going back to uh, our media panel, uh, PNC, if there's anybody that would like to ask any questions. All right, I, I guess not. Um, if there's, before we end this press conference, if uh, anybody on the panel, any of our guests would like to uh, g give any closing remarks. Thanks, Shirag. I'd just like, again, to thank uh, all of our partners who made this possible, uh, and to, of course, the vice speaker and to your entire team uh, for uh, drafting this uh, legislation, for going after this grant, leading this effort uh, to help us uh, continue to build our uh, higher education capacity here on Island Sidious Masi, and we look forward to uh, years of success to come and uh, more of our island students returning to Guam to serve here. Senator Mayor, please. I look forward to the passage of this measure. I think once we get this bill going, we can really begin the scholarship program and develop everything that we need to do to incentivize people to go towards uh, medical degrees. So first things first, let's get our bill going. And uh, we ask for everyone's support. Um, thank you very much to my colleagues and to all those here. To all my island brothers and sisters uh, from our nation within the blue continent, I want to extend my undunklu, undunklu nasidzuos masi for truly believing in this program and wanting to bring our, uh, our um, students home uh, to do work here. Uh, we've been raised as uh, education is the key to full success, but working collaborative together in this blue continent will truly bring successful uh, outcomes uh, for our community, our island nations, but more importantly, uh, to have them come home and give back to their people. So uh, like you said, Senator Tars, uh, we need to, uh, as we work on our uh, legislation here and see the successes, uh, like from our brothers and sisters and uh, uh, CNMI, uh, it was that collaboration with everybody to coming together to make sure that we include everybody within this blue continent. So to all the presidents and the leaders uh, uh, from, from, the, from our blue continent, uh, Undunklu Nasizos Masi, Saina Maasi, for truly believing uh, in this journey moving forward. And I must say again to OIA for, for truly championing this and bringing it up to the forefront and working closely. Wichi, you are amazing, and thank you for believing in all of us. Saina Maasi. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Speaker. If there's anybody else on the panel that would like to... Uh, uh, Say anything else before we close this press conference? Uh, 
Uh, President Michelow, any closing remarks? Thank you. We are thrilled about this announcement and the great things ahead for all of us. Thank you again for your partnership and your leadership. All right. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for being here, our uh, distinguished guests, our media partners. And uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, conclude this press conference. Thank you so much.